Welcome aboard! Ako si Lynn Bakani. Ito ang Maritime Viewpoints sa Marina World Online. Joining us is Ms. Mary Ann Pastrana, Executive Vice President of Archipelago Philippine Ferries Corporation, owner and operator of FASCAT. Mabuhay! The Philippines is a huge archipelago. Our vision will fully connect the islands seamlessly. With great pride, we welcome you aboard FASCAT, owned and operated by Archipelago Philippine Ferries Corporation. FASCAT is a world-class fleet of brand-new, mid-speed, roll-on, roll-off, internationally classed catamaran vessels. Our goal is to bridge the thousands of amazing islands of the Philippines. FASCAT is globally accredited, certified by American Bureau of Shipping, Lloyd's Register, and Bureau Veritas. Our vessels have overall lengths of 50 and 54 meters, with the capacity for at least 34 to 40 cars, 7 to 12 trucks or buses, and 300 plus passengers. FASCAT vessels have been carefully designed and built to ensure the worry-free transport of goods and passengers to their destination safe and sound. Unlike other ferries, FASCAT has twin hulls, built to withstand our country's weather and sea conditions. FASCAT is impressively stable on water, better, faster, and safer compared to monohulls. Multi-hulls have no history of capsizing and represents less than 1% of global fatalities. Also traveling with you is a professional FASCAT crew, highly trained to respond to any emergency on board. It has four internationally classed Yanmar engines, unlike most local vessels with only a single engine. This assures your voyage out on sea. FASCAT is compliant with the International Maritime Organization's Safe Return to Port Regulation. We value safety and having more engines mitigates the risk and is better during emergency conditions. FASCAT is much faster than most roll-on, roll-off vessels in the country. FASCAT has a freeboard clearance above water line of 3 meters. It handles rough seas and big waves better compared to vessels categorized to operate on inland or smooth water. FASCAT also does not have a heavy ballast tank, unlike most regular ships. Instead, it has 10 watertight compartments to mitigate flooding. FASCAT's multiple engine and superior propulsion system by Nakashima is not only environmentally friendly, but it allows travel at the fastest and most efficient speed. FASCAT is also compliant with international fire and safety standards. FASCAT wholeheartedly cares for the persons with disability and senior citizens, providing designated easily accessible areas for convenience, comfort, and safety. Crew members are always ready to assist passengers in any situation or emergency. They are highly trained. Each member is required to regularly and repeatedly undergo world-class training programs on safety practices and management. At FASCAT, we practice key service essential principles. These principles define who we are and guide us in what we say and do to ensure that we delight our passengers and make their journey with us pleasant, comfortable, and fun. We put our customers first. We understand sea travel is an experience, so enjoy Fast Cat's lead space and amenities on the way to your destination. Fast Cat is pro-environment, and we're not just saying that. We are proud to let you know that Fast Cat has passed the Tier 2 Emission Standards, which safely protect the environment and the ocean from harmful pollutants. Our bridge control system is powered and supported by solar panels 
and wind turbines. For our future builds, more solar panels will be used to reduce fuel consumption and carbon emission. Plus, there's more! FastCat is using the latest European marine technology for ultrasonic anti-fouling to decrease marine growth on the hull for longer vessel protection. A modern navigation system is in place for redundancy and preparedness for any eventuality on the sea. This state-of-the-art system includes two steering controls which can shift from automatic to manual, multiple radar and navigational system, automatic identification system, both thrusters to aid in docking and undocking procedures, and for better maneuverability, improved water-cooled air conditioning system that is pro-environment. In case of emergency, FASCAT assures our passengers' well-being, safety, and passage to shore to reach their destination. With the interest and welfare of the Filipinos in mind, we will continue to modernize our fleet to offer a safe, fast, and convenient travel experience. New routes are regularly introduced to help boost business, agriculture, and tourism in our country's far-off places. And in turn, uplift the lives of local communities and contribute to the overall economic development of the Philippines. As we sail into the future, we aim to be a comprehensive transportation solutions provider. Together with our partners from land transport, hotel accommodations, cleaning services, port management, training, shipbuilding, food services, and logistics, we are making it happen. United as one group, we are here to serve you. With all these innovations and waves of progress, we at Archipelago Philippine Ferries Corporation promise you one thing. As we expand to more destinations all over the country and Asia, we will provide our passengers superior features in safety and comfort and continue to improve vessel features and design. We assure you there will be more to come. Explore the beauty of the Philippines and experience genuine Filipino hospitality. Have a very safe, very fast, and very convenient trip. Good evening, Miss Mary Ann, and welcome to the program. Good evening, Lynn. Thank you for having me. Kilalang kilang fast cut sa mga modernong roll on, roll off, roro vessels nito na naglalayag ngayon sa iba't ibang lugar sa ating bansa. Ilan na ngayon ang inyong barko, Miss Mary Ann? At uh, maladagdagan pa ba ito? We're happy to say that we have 16 fast cats connecting the Philippine Islands. And yes, madadagdagan pa ito. Alam mo, Lynn, ang aming big, hairy, audacious goal ay 60 fast cats by 2030. Well, this was pre-pandemic. So maaaring ma-delay. Pero tuloy pa rin ang aming vision na gawin ito after all, there's so many islands in the Philippines. We know na malaking tulong nga yan sa domestic shipping operations natin. Uh, pero pag-usapan natin na ngayon ang uh, mga programa ninyo para sa ating mga cadets naman. No? Itong ating mga future seafarers, lalo na ngayong pandemic, di ba? Kumusta ang inyong mga programa para sa kanila? Uh, Naapektuhan talaga yan, no? Because our, the students have this fear of the pandemic and then it's not helping that uh, there are borders that are very strict, and of course, close borders. But what I can say is that our, our ships are moving 24-7 and therefore, we can continue with the Kadechi program. Alam mo rin, isang magandang um, gusto kong i-report sa industriya is that we have a structured Kadechi program wherein um, kinumbine namin o blended learning na siya. No? So, may, pan may dun sa one-year Kadechi program, merong time na nasa barko sila, may time na pwede silang mag-e-learning, meron kaming platform na tinatawag namin iLearn FastCat, uh, meron kaming electronic training record book, at kinukumbine namin yan, you know, in them getting familiar in the ports, in what it means to be in a 
shipping organizations such as ours. So it's pretty much comprehensive and I'm happy to say that we can take in a lot of cadets. We, we can definitely help solve this cadetship birth problems that we have in the industry. How about this electronic training record book? Diba, alam natin sa STCW, requirement na merong uh, training record book ang bawat kadete na nag-undergo ng kadetship program. So what we did is we digitalized it in such a way that it is um, available on demand to the cadets. So they can use their phones, they can use their laptops, they can use tablet, and they can use it anywhere, um, whether there's a connection or not. So, pwede nilang i-access kahit walang internet connection at pagka kailangan nilang mag-submit dahil we check it periodically, dun lang sila kukonect sa internet. So, uh, it is powered by Seaversity, which is a an all-Filipino firm that I'm very proud of kasi mga batang marino sila na natutong mag-code or it's their passion and uh, they powered it for us. Um, what, what does it do? No? So, it makes um, the training very transparent. So we make the cadets do it over the period of the time they, they are with us, and then we are able to check their progress. Para bang sa school, kung may grading system, ito meron din siyang grading system. And then we can share it with, the, of course, the students. And if they give access to schools and parents, pwede din. And I mean, overall effect noon. Overall effect on din is gagaling sila no? because naiintindihan nila kung ano yung requirement ng, ng training training and you know them actually doing it on board the boat while in our office, while on the port and it's transparent as I, as I said. So happy ako na may ganito na and we've been doing it for the past two years and the feedback that we have received from school owners, from parents is that they have seen the improvement on the cadets and the students per se and even the students report that they learn more of course they comprehend what they're going through and um it's fun it's fun para gamified siya. so we make um learning fun it's experiential so kumbaga win 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 para sa ating lahat Win sa estudyante, win sa skwela, win sa magulang, win sa industriya. So, we're happy because this is transparent. Kasi yung nakakalungkot na experience ng mga kadete, hindi natatapos ang kadetship nila sa domestic, hindi nila nabuksan ang kanilang mga training record book. And um, there are some bad practices wherein they open it pagka, you know, at the end of their term. And then, how, how will you be able to fill it up in you know one time so yeah we're happy with that uh, electronic training record book that we have available um two years we've been using and we are continuously um growing it via our i learned fast cat platform wherein it's customized to us we load um specific um lessons in relation to our operations aside from yung mga parang universal uh, learning like supervisory skills um, and of course mga functional depends on uh, where they are in our organization so again we are doing this because we want to train people we want to increase the competence and we want to prepare everybody uh, for the needs of the industry so from the academe to the industry we have closed the gap and then for our team as well tuloy-tuloy ang aming training, tuloy-tuloy ang aming learning. Because yun ang kailangan ng ating industriya. Alam mo, dadagdag ko lang, Lina, um, ang, ang shipping industry is highly technical. Um, meron mga pag-aaral na nagsasabi na ang mga Pilipino daw, eh, may, ang strength natin na sa mga management, services industry, but this business is highly technical. So what does it mean? It means there's a certain degree of um, specialization and expertise needed, competency level in its own, na dapat natin pakagalingan kung gusto nating mag-improve ang ating industriya, kung gusto natin maging sustainable itong uh, shipping industry or the maritime industry, 
then workers should be competent, should have the technical expertise. And in what we are doing, we are helping increase that and we are helping make this industry stronger. Kasi nga, alam mo naman, Lee, bago yung mga barko natin, gusto nating padatilihin na ganyan ang itsura niyan. Uh, 10, 20 years, no? And I've, we've seen it abroad. Uh, nakita mo, dun sa mga sinakya nating ferry, nung tayo nag-attend ng interferry conference sa London, no? Sasakay tayo, mga barko, 10 years, 20 years, ang gaganda, mukhang bago pa rin. And it's always a question in my head, na parang, ha, why? How are they able to do this? And yun yung isang realization ko rin. Kailangan uh, ang Pilipino mag, magkaroon tayo ng change in mindset. Uh, we have to be strong in preventive maintenance. We have to bring up our standards. Kaya nga po dito sa FASCAT, kami po ay ISO certified, uh, ABS class ang barko natin. So, you know, kailangan pagtayad po natin yung standards. And the way we train cadets, we are already introducing that. And Marino World ay talaga namang naging witness dyan sa mga uh, sharing of best practices ninyo, even sa international, no? Yeah, we have the conferences in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and London. Uh, ano pa yung susunod na conference where in uh, kayo rin ang magiging speaker? Yeah, uh, ngayong February, kami naibitahan mag-present sa World Ferry Safety Association sa New York to present about our... Uh, uh, technology, digital technology in training. Um, kasi nga, all eyes on us, no? Uh, being a maritime nation and being manning capital of the world. Uh, tinitingnan ng mundo kung anong ginagawa natin. And so we're happy to share that uh, we are um, asked to present about this. And we've taken it to the next level. So, sabi ko nga kanina, two years na namin ginagawa itong I Learn Fast Cat and um, itong electronic training record book. So, syempre, take it to the next level. Ano po yung next level na yan? Augmented reality. Kung nanonood, napanood mo ba Mission Impossible, uh, Lynn? <laughs> yung, uh, <laughs> yung parang mga gumagalaw, digital. Uh, anyway, that's augmented reality. Um, we are doing that. So, kung ikaw ay uh, kadete, ikaw ay uh, empleyado ng FASCAT, may kita mo sa screen mo ang mukhang Pascat, mukhang nakasakay ka sa isang Pascat. Pagkatapos doon, matututuhan mo iba-ibang parte ng barko at magkakaroon din ng assessment sa kaduluduluhan. And then the way it's presented is that mukhang totoo, kaya augmented reality. And then how we intend to grow it later is that we will create situations where people can be trained to react to the situations. For example, fire how do you uh, how do you uh, respond during a fire during an, an accident yung mga crowd and crisis management ganyan yun yung balak naming uh, gawin um, siguro maybe in the next 2 years magagawa na natin yan but we're happy to be able to do this oh miss mary and uh, for sure patok sa mga millennials yan pero paano naman ang response ng ating mga Sorry, hang huh? All this. <laughs> na mga seafarers. Oh, Di ba sila mapag-iiwanan dyan? Kumusta naman yung kanilang uh, pag-accept sa ganyang mga technology sa inyong experience? <laughs> alam mo, Lynn, natutuwa ako kasi alam mo naman dito sa ating industriya. So, well, for domestic, ha? Uh, sinasabi ko nga, ang isang issue sa amin ay uh, mar- ang mga seafarers natin, ang pangarap nila lagi mag-abroad. Because they make so much more money outside. So either we get the young ones, fresh graduates who have no experience or not a lot of experience, or the old ones or young ones <laughs> who have gone abroad and then they have come back. Um, so yeah, the age of our captains are like extreme, uh, young and old. Um, we're talking about 50s, 60s. 70s, may even 70s. Uh, but they're really good and healthy. Uh, really good and healthy. Uh, so far, they're adopting our team because uh, majority of our workforce are still young people. Uh, they're adopting. Uh, we have made it easy for the not-so-young ones to, to learn it. So we have a very strong culture of um, mentor mentorship and coaching within our organization. So the experienced one, mentor and coach the younger ones. And maybe these younger ones, mentor and coach the older ones when it comes to 
digital. Kagaya ko, nagpapaturo ko sa mga anak ko when it comes to using my phone and whatever, you know, high-tech things, I ask for their help. So, yeah, as we speak, ngayon, Lynn, may kasama akong mga young millennials dito, sila nagsiset up nitong technology para sa akin. So, you know, we make it so easy. user friendly when we use technology, that's what we think about. Madali bang matutuhan, makaka-adjust ba mga tao? Because it's really the way to go. Everybody should learn it because it's really the way to go. Look at this. Our meeting now, di ba? Dati face-to-face. Ngayon, ito na tayo. Zoom, digital. So it's really the way to go. And so far, um, our usage, it's it's um, picking up very well. Of course, it, it takes time. Um, in our studies, um, <clears throat> from the experiences of interfering members abroad, um, when they introduced uh, this platform way ahead of us, Parang for them, the um, BC Ferries of Canada took four years from the time they introduced it to the time um, people adopted it and become you, you know became um, used to it and it became a culture for them four years. E two years parang naman kami, going third year. So I'm confident that, uh, that it will become a part of our culture uh, very, very soon. So hopefully in the next two years. So So my cycle is um, two courses a month. May bagong two courses a month. So, kung ikaw ay nagkatrabaho sa FASCAT, every month meron kang pag-aaralang bagong two months aside from yung mga dati na namin. So, we're building up like a, um, a university online. FASCAT Academy online. But of course, ngayon may, meron tayong challenges kagaya nga nang sabi ko kanina. No? It's pandemic and we have... Uh protocols, no? So, sa tingin mo, paano mababalansin yung ating um, pag-address uh, dito sa mga concerns na to, uh, both uh, government and private sector sa domestic shipping? Yung ating uh, tuloy-tuloy sana na training pa rin ng ating mga kadete, uh, especially dito sa mga domestic ships, kagaya ng mga barko nyo, ang gaganda pa naman, sana uh, ma-experience nila yung uh, makapag-trabaho uh, uh, dyan, di ba? Yeah, yeah. Alam mo, kaya nga, Lynn, sabi ko, kailangan magtulong-tulong tayo. Um, so, ikaw, kasama ka dito, um, marina, um, mining agencies, uh, schools, sana magkaroon ng forum na magkausap-usap at talaga magkaroon ng firm action plan kung paano natin matutulungan itong mga um, kabataan natin. No? Kasi um, narinig ko yung salitang academic freeze no? sa several... Uh, webinars na na-attendan ko na hinost ng mga iba-ibang maritime schools, yun nang nangyayari daw ngayon, ang tawag nila academic freeze. Parang every, everybody stop moving. Ayaw magpadala ng mga mga kadete kasi natatakot. Even the schools, they're not pushing it because they can sense the fear of parents. And then of course, the cadets, they follow their parents. Siyempre, yung funding and then uh, decision also would be their parents. So, parang everybody's on a standstill. So, we understand that during the first uh, few months of the pandemic, but now it's here. Ito na yung reality natin. So, are we still going to be frozen? Paano yung industriya? Ano? Paano itong uh, uh, pangangailangan ng global world? At of course, ito, wag na tayong lumayo, itong domestic ferry industry. Um, will it do us good in the long term if we if we stop at, at this point or if we just take it easy and don't do anything so i think as an industry we should create awareness uh, we should talk you know schools and the industry and you know the the uh, several uh, organizations like pisa or pami or pam pci uh, alma maybe everybody should you know band together and talk and create a serious action plan to address this issue of the industry. Senior so, joint. Yeah. Yung academic freeze, hindi yeah. dapat sa shipping industry. Hindi pwede. Kasi di ba, kailangan talaga natin ng mga marino. Tuloy-tuloy naman ang pangangailangan sa mga marino. Eh, di ba, sabi nga natin, no shipping, no shopping. So, pagka tumigil ang pagtakbo ng mga, ang pag, ang mga takbo ng barko, Dahil walang marino, e eh, paano na po ang mga shopping natin? Paano po ang food supply natin at mga factory, ang mga supply nila, eh, maapektuhan po lahat yan. 
that's why nga um, IMO um, has moved that seafarers uh, be called key workers. And during our Women in Maritime um, board meeting last week, Lynn, um, napag-usapan nga na ang seafarers are considered essential workers. Um, we were talking about this in relation to the vaccine um, rollout, diba? yung mga prioritization nila. So, seafarers are essential workers. So, we, we cannot stop uh, producing and we cannot waste more time because you think about it, kawawa yung mga magulang na nagpaaral sa mga anak, imbis na mga anak maging productive na sila at a certain point because they finish their schooling in four years because we provided them the cadetship program that they need to finish their course. Di ba, that's good for them kung four years productive na yung anak nila. Eh ngayon, dahil naantala ang kanilang pag-graduate because hindi sila nakakasakay sa barko, hindi natutuloy ang kanilang cadetship, it is not going to do everyone good. Not good for them, not good for their family, not good for the school because the schools will be uh, diba, sanctioned by CHED if they don't uh, uh, fill up their carrying capacity. Diba? So it's not good for the industry if we don't produce seafarers. We know that um, there are challenges and there are um, what are, threats in the industry, papayag ba tayo na ma maunahan tayo ng ibang nasyon in providing manning in the, the, the seafaring industry? So, um, hindi po lingid sa ating kaalaman during conferences na napag-uusapan how uh, other countries like Vietnam and uh, Indonesia and their government putting in money in maritime education so that they become our competitors in this field. So, gusto po ba natin yun, di ba? Uh, I always tell the young cadets, the ERI story, Lynn, yung ERI, mm -hmm. yung International Rice Research Institute, because graduate ako ng University of the Philippines, Los Baños. So, that's where ERI is. So, um, we know that the Thailanders, Thailanders and the Vietnamese, they came to ERI to study growing rice. And now, we are importing rice from Thailand and Vietnam. Why? When they trained here. Diba? So, napag-iwanan po tayo sa larangan na yan. So, now I tell the young cadets who are training with us, payag ba kayo na maunahan na naman tayo ng ibang bansa? So, if, you know, if we don't put our act together, if we don't prioritize, if we don't collaborate and synergize, we lose out. Tayo na naman as a country, as a people, ang mawawala. So it's just one of my concern um, being um, a player in the industry uh, kapag ka walang steady pipeline aanhin mo ang bagong barko kung wala kang seafarer na magpapatakbo di ba paano po mapagsisilbihan ng ating bayan paano maitatawid ang mga goods paano natin matutulungan ang mga farmers di ba na nagtatanim tapos kailangan nilang dali na kanilang mga ani dito sa Maynila pero paano kung walang mga barkong kagaya ng kaska at na magdadala dito sa, sa mga pamilihan. So, that's the bigger, bigger um, effect, uh, economic impact that it will do for us. And it, it's, it's important that we think and look at the bigger picture because it's serious. <laughs> Di ba? Minsan, ano lang tayo, parang, ah, okay lang, nakalimutan na natin. Nakalimutan na natin yung iri na yon Nakalimutan natin. And then, nabibisi tayo sa mga iringan or, um, you know, uh, thinking of anong ginawa niyang hindi maganda, you know, and then we ended up, we end up, you know, having this bickering and then who loses out in the industry, diba? So, kawawa din naman yung mga kadete na kapag hindi natin inayos. So, yeah, for us, what I'm saying is we're here, we're continuously moving. Sana po, um, magkaroon tayo ng concerted effort to, um, yeah, make things happen for our young people. Academic freeze is a no! <laughs> Hindi pwede! <laughs> Pero kumusta yung mga protocols na ipinatutupad sa mga domestic shipping? Uh, especially yung sa pag-train uh, ng ating mga kadete, pag-akyat sa mga barko. Well, it's a challenge nga. Kasi ang daming requirement, no? Um, of course, uh, we are bounded by IATF rules. So we follow all those protocols na social distancing, Hand washing, alcohol provided, temperature check before boarding the, the boat, 
Uh, we know that uh, borders are still closed, so travelers are still not allowed unless we have all those uh, permits, uh, you know, official business, uh, medical certificate. Ngayon sa mga kadete, nire-require sila ng swab test before silang sumumpa sa, sa boat. So what am I saying? Um, kung titignan po natin sa mga ospital, uh, di ba po, kasi may anak po akong doktor, kaya alam ko po ito, um, Di ba ang mga estudyante yung nagdo-doktor, exposed sila sa ospital, nagjo-duty din sila, but they do the protocols. And kailangan yun, imagine ninyo kung yung mga estudyante doktor hindi pa, pa practicing sa, sa ospital, sino pong gagamot sa atin ngayon may mga COVID tayo, di ba? May COVID na pandemic, okay, so what am I saying? Sana po ganun din ang pananaw natin dito sa uh, maritime industry. We cannot stop. So whatever... Um, issue that is causing us to to stop and not able to take, we should push and work together to make things happen. That's why, yeah, um, I'm reaching out also to people to say, hey, what are we doing? What can we do about this? Because this is such an industry problem. If, and if nobody moves, you know, the industry will be affected. But, but I want to be proactive and tell people to, hey, come on, let's move because paano na lang kabataan and then paano na lang industriya. And time is of the essence. Sayang yung oras if we don't move. And um, and I guess what I also want to say, Lynn, is um, um, having um, been invited to speak in um, uh, various uh, forums, both uh, domestic and international, um, we have seen that we can really help and make a difference no um i think the right way is mag-train sila domestic bago international kasi nangyayari ngayon dahil nga uh, wala silang tiwala sa domestic ferry industry di ba parang domestic lang naman yan eh you know there's this mindset na domestic lang naman yan so ano nangyayari may ibang mga eskwela talaga they just i going abroad but how many slots are there and you have to deal with uh MLC issues. Diba? So, bakit ganun yung mindset? Pero pwede naman dito, from domestic, pagalingin natin sila domestic, pagsibihan ang domestic, and then, you know, really train them well and be ready for the global world, you know, maybe several years after their graduation and being, you know, officers already. And, and this is also um, going to help solve the issue, no? Sa, sa maraming forum ng uh, maritime industry, they always say there is an impending shortage of uh, maritime officers. And I'm sure you know that uh, statistics show that we Filipinos now are just uh, rank and file. We, we don't aspire to be officers anymore. And you know, I thought about it. I said, eh, bakit nga ba? Because yung sweldo ng rating, happy na sila dun eh. Entry level abroad, what? $1,000? Eh, $800? $1,000? $1,300? Happy na sila. They're good with that. But what, what are we saying? No, we, we, we aim for more for you. You can do more if you, you become an officer. We want to be a strong, you know, competent, um, manning industry so that we keep our place but at the same time, we do something for our country. Yung palalakasin din natin ng domestic industry. So hindi mindset na, ang galing ko sa labas, pero dito sa domestic, ito lang. Hindi, di ba? Magaling ako sa Pilipinas, magaling din ako sa abroad. And proud tayo kung ano meron tayo dito sa Pilipinas. Hindi natin uh, ilalang na domestic lang. No, how we train is how the global world is expected to, to deliver. So that's what we do. That's the mindset I think that we should be teaching our young people and teaching our cadets. And you know, I think Lynn, ano, talagang we can do it as a country, as a people. With all these brand new ships uh, here, um, this at par with uh, global standards, the global industry, we can do it. We can bring back the glory of the Philippines and together as an industry, as a people, we can make it happen. Thank you very much, Miss Mary Ann. Happy to be here, Lynn. Thank you for having me.
The aim of Archipelago Philippine Ferries Corporation is to connect the islands of the Philippines. With it comes the responsibility to care for the environment and the Filipino. As APFC commits to pursue excellence by providing safe, fast, and convenient service, the organization takes pride in their corporate social responsibility initiatives. FastCat CSR efforts mirrors its passion. Extending care where help is needed. Servicio by puso para sa bayan. FastCat empowers the community. FastCat gets involved in maritime advocacies. FastCat cares for the environment. FastCat promotes health, wellness, and personal development for its employees. FastCat offers education to bring opportunities for future leaders and strengthens linkages with the academe. FastCat has finally connected the Philippine archipelago. But this is just the beginning. They are determined to do more and to share their progress with the Filipino. FastCat. Servicio may puso para sa bayan. See you again next Saturday, 8 o'clock in the evening, dito sa Maritime Viewpoints, Marino World Online. Ako si Lynn Bacali. Thank you. Salamat po.